Hey folks, Chad Perkins here for Red Giant. So hopefully by now you've gone through the previous tutorials in this series and know how the buttons work. And in the next couple of tutorials, we're gonna put those pieces together and make some projects that utilize multiple features across form. In this tutorial, we're going to be making what I call alien fire, although you don't have to use it for alien stuff or fire for that matter. I recently used a similar technique to create some energy coming off of a magical ball for a short film I did. Even if I zoom in here, I mean, I think this looks amazing. So I find it's a useful technique to know. So I'm just going to start from scratch here with the default application of form and just hang with me for a split second to set this up. Like a lot of times in tutorials, it's gonna look like garbage, uh, but just hang with me for a second. I'm gonna change the base form to sphere. I'm gonna change the size to XYZ individual. I only want one sphere layer. So I'm gonna take sphere layers down to one. And uh, for X, I'm going to take this to 200 and the size Y, I'm gonna to take to 700. So basically I have a capsule here. I want this to be very dense. This is going to slow your machine down a little bit more and that's okay. Uh, that's kind of what it takes to make this thing work. I'm gonna take particles in X to 400, particles in Y to 700. So again, we have just this, what looks like right now, a white capsule, but again, just hang in there with me. I'm gonna to go to the particle section and I'm going to uh, change the blend mode to, well, let's hold off on blend mode for a second. Let's check the, change the color first. I'm gonna click the color swatch, and for the RGB values, I'm in 8-bit uh, color mode. I'm just gonna use 10 for red, 20 for green, and 40 for blue. Should give us a very dark color, but then when we change the blend mode from normal to add, we get this kind of uh, glowy, capsule thing. So, so far all we have is a 3D capsule that's really dense with a lot of particles. So now we're at the height of ugliness, <laughs> but hang in here. I'm going to close up the particle section. I'm going to open up fractal field and I'm going to start bringing in the fractal displacement just a little bit. As I take effect size, even just to one, you could start to see the fractal field affect the size of our particles and that makes a big difference. And if I play this, we have a little bit of movement here. I mean, it's rendering, so it's going really slow here. And I'm gonna just scrub that a little bit and you can see how the fractal field is affecting the size as it moves around our little capsule here. I'm gonna take effect opacity up just a little bit to seven to enhance that effect. Now I wanna add some displacement. I'm gonna take displace to 200 and then we're gonna get this like kind of you know typical form look, and uh, we're gonna fix this in just a second, of course. I wanna adjust the F scale. This kind of, again, looks like the default form kind of look, which is, again, really beautiful, but not what we're going for here. So I'm gonna increase uh, F scale up to 15 to create kind of more detail and chaos, and that's gonna help our fire look more fiery. I, again, realize it's not that great. Stay with me. Uh, I'm gonna take flow evolution to 75 to make this move a little bit more quickly. And then as fire tends to do, it moves up. So I want to have this fractal displacement constantly moving up. And in order to do that, I'm gonna just flow Y. If I increase this to a positive value, it's actually gonna flow downwards. So I'm gonna actually take this to a negative value. And actually, I'll just go ahead and type it in. I'm gonna type in negative 150 here. Okay. So now we're ready to make this look good. The secret, the secret to this trick here is to adjust the fractal strength curve because really we want no fractal displacement at the bottom and then we want to increase fractal displacement as the tendrils of the flames go up a little bit. So I'm gonna change fractal strength over Y. Again, that's the vertical axis here. And I'm gonna open up the fractal strength curve. Here's again where this trick comes alive. Now, what I usually do when I'm working with a weird uh, axis, basically anything other than X, <laughs> honestly, I get confused pretty easily. Um, and I don't remember what the top and the bottom represents. I know if we're adjusting the Y axis, one of these sides represents the top and one of them represents the bottom. I don't honestly remember which one is which. So what I do is I usually carve out like a little chunk like this, like a little like scoop. And then I see where that affects. And I could see that as I fiddle with the left side, it adjusts the top of the, uh, the, the, the form here. So I know that this affects the top, this side affects the bottom, and that's good. That's what I need to know. So I'm gonna click this reset button to reset this graph. And what I want to have happen is that I want at the top, I want this area to be completely displaced with fractal displacement. 
and I want the fractal field to not affect at all the bottom. So I want to just use this linear preset here from top to bottom, just as it comes. And that's going to make the fractal displacement a lot at the top and nothing at the bottom. And that's exactly what we're getting. And already we're starting to see a big difference here. This really is where the trick happens is in choosing where we're going to put the fractal displacement across our form. So nothing down here and it goes up to everything at the top. Now I'm going to close up the fractal field, go into the particle section, and we're going to fiddle with the size curve and the opacity curve as well, because this goes up way too high. So all this stuff right here, where it's like completely fractally displaced, like this does has nothing, it does nothing for us. So we want to cut things off down here, like midway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change size over to Y, open up the size curve, and again, this left side represents the top, right represents the bottom. So I don't want any size at the top, no size at all. And if I make like a really hard edge here where there's, you know, no size at the top and then all size at the bottom, it just crops it basically. So what we want to do is kind of, and maybe I want to go to the pen side so I can kind of eliminate that down there a little bit. Um, and maybe we'll go back to the pencil side just real quick. Uh, what I want to do here is maybe get this a little bit more gradual here, just like a little bit smoother, maybe, and get rid of a spike like that and let's smooth it a bit. And maybe now we could go over to the pen side. So we have a little bit, it's a little bit easier to control. So I can fiddle with this to taste. You can see what's going on here. We got rid of the super crazy fractal stuff down here and now we could adjust the size and again a lot of the stuff is to taste so uh, if you wanted a stronger fire and then like kind of tendrils that were more wispy you could kind of cut that off in the middle there if you wanted to so you have total flexibility and i basically want to do something similar to the opacity curve so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna copy this and i'm gonna close up the size curve open up or actually i'll change opacity to y first go to the opacity curve and i'll paste this and so we have something similar with the opacity curve. I'll go over the pen side and I might want to bump this up a little bit. So we have a little bit more opacity right here in the center. And maybe that's what we want to do there. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I mean, that's really all there is to it. We can go back to our fractal field settings and we could adjust the F scale if we wanted to or other properties to add more detail to this fire if we wanted to. And of course we could adjust the curves to make this um, you know, more fractally displaced at the bottom or less at the top or whatever we want and just the size and opacity. But that's really all there is to this trick, which is pretty incredible. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the background layer just to finish this thing off. I'm going to open up uh, World Transform, which is now just called Transform. And I'm going to put this in the right spot. I'm going to offset this over 15 pixels. I'm also going to um, move this up negative 300 pixels. And for the Z offset, I'm going to give this a value of 730 to kind of push it back. And then to finish off the look, I'm going to turn on this glow layer, which is basically just like a solid that's got this mask on it that's faded. And that's it. There's our trick. It was that easy to go ahead and create uh, this alien fire form is so flexible. This is so gorgeous. And it's kind of unlike what you're used to seeing with form, but it is that easy to just jump in and create something really elegant and beautiful. So thanks for watching this tutorial, folks. I'm Chad Perkins. Take care. We'll see you in the next one. Shout out to Pond5 for all the super dope music I used in this tutorial.